sworn in. You're going to raise your right hand, state your name, and spell your last for the record. Michael Joseph Regan, R E A G A N. Officer at the Rutgers University Police Department in New Brunswick. And did you attend and graduate the police academy at some point? I did. And when was that? That was in 2001. Now, <clears throat> what unit uh, or division are you currently assigned to? I'm currently assigned to the Intelligence Services Unit at the Prosecutor's Office. And back in October of 2018, what unit were you assigned to? The Major Crimes Unit. Now, do you have to undergo any, any annual trainings um, of any type within, within the office itself? I've attended several annual trainings um, and elective trainings as well to include homicide investigation, sexual assault and child abuse investigation, narcotics investigation, things of that nature. Now, can you just briefly describe some of the functions uh, of a detective within the Major Crimes Unit? So the Major Crimes Unit detective is responsible for investigating just that, major crimes that happen within the county. That can include things like um, homicide, attempted murder, or homicide. Um, sexual assault and child abuse, uh, shootings, robberies, kidnapping, things of that nature. Now approximately how many investigations of either attempted murder or homicide have you been involved in the course of your, um, in the course of your employment with the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office? I would say about 10 to 15. Now I'm gonna draw your attention to October 12th of 2018. Were you working that day? Yes, I was. Um, and on the morning of October 12th of 2018, did the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office receive a call from the Bordentown Township regarding an investigation? Yes. And what was that in reference to? It was in reference to a stabbing that had occurred in Bordentown Township. And uh, do you recall specifically where? Uh, the address was given to us as the Petro <laughs> truck stop. In response to the Prosecutor's Office receiving that call, what, if anything, did you do? Uh, I uh, responded to the scene um, I met initially with uh, local detective Josh Pavlov, who was on scene. Um, I learned about the investigation to date and uh, some of the tasks that had been accomplished already. Um, now, was anybody else from the Burlington County Prosecutor's Office deployed uh, that day? That yes. Year? And who was that? Uh, detectives from a crime scene unit were also uh, deployed to the scene. And um, upon your arrival on the scene at the truck stop, had it been shut down at that point? No. Um, and why is that? As far as I was aware, I learned uh, when I got there that um, they had had a large area um, of potential crime scene that they had identified, uh, as well as a potential suspect that had been identified. Um, and the truck stop in and of itself is a very large uh, and busy, high volume business. There are constantly um, vehicles moving in and out of the business. Um, it's, it's a very large uh, area as well as a very busy area as well. Um, now, upon being briefed uh, when you arrived, did you learn that something had taken place within the iron skillet? Yes. Uh, did you then respond to the iron skillet? Yes. And what, if anything, did you do when you were in there? Uh, upon arrival, I met with uh, the manager uh, who had related to me um, that uh, it was potentially two employees there that uh, may have had information regarding the investigation. Um, and did you ultimately speak with those employees? Yes. Um, did you do anything else where you were at the Iron Skillet? Yes, in speaking with those employees, I learned that um, people involved in the investigation uh, may have been customers uh, at the restaurant, so I had asked for receipts uh, for the transactions that those customers may have provided. Okay, I'm gonna show you what's been marked as S. <clears throat> Additionally, in the envelope, were there copies of those receipts? 
They were a team from the manager at the Iron Skillet. I believe her first name was Paulette. And there are some markings at the top of, the, of each of the receipts. Do you recall what they were for? That was for my own reference as far as um, people who are involved in the investigation. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this time, if there are not already in evidence on this, please. Any objection? No, I thought they were, but if they're not, I have no objection. Very good. And evidence without objection is as well. I just put on the projector screen. Now, just to, again, could you just further explain the little markings at the top for it? Uh, at the top of the, I guess from the screen view, the left side, uh, there is a V with a circle around it, and it says sitting at table. Mm -hmm. uh, and the right receipt from the screen view says paying and S with a circle. Okay. And did they help you differentiate wh which receipt belongs to whom? Yes. Um, now, looking at the receipt on the right, <coughs> are you able to tell us who that receipt belonged to? That receipt belonged to the suspect in this investigation? And um, do you recall, or can you read again what the timestamp on the receipt is as to when you left the restaurant? It is uh, dated October 12, 2018 at 8.55 a.m. And then to speak to the other receipt specifically, um, the marking on the top of it tell you that it belongs to the victim in this case? Yes. <clears throat> and can you, again, the date and time on this receipt? That is timestamped uh, October 12, 2018 at 9.09 a.m. Now, after you um, spoke with the witnesses in the iron skillet and were able to obtain the receipts, what, if anything, did, else did you do at that time? I agree that there was a surveillance video um, potentially uh, involved in this investigation as well that was being secured by the Fort Town Township Police Department. Um, and was that the video from inside the iron skillet itself? Yes, that's correct. Um, after that video was secured, at some point, um, were you advised uh, that a knife had been located in this matter? Yes. And who advised you of that? Detective Pavlov. And was that already secured at that time, or did you have to secure that? That was already secured. Um, now, based on your investigation, did you also walk around the crime scene? Yes. Um, what did you do upon walking around, or what, if anything, were you doing while you were walking around? Uh, we were looking for items of evidentiary value, anything that may indicate uh, upon reference or observation that it was involved in the crime. Um, did you find any other weapons of any nature? No. Aside from the blood trail itself, did you find anything else of any evidentiary value? No. <clears throat> um, now, what happens to uh, the Covenant truck itself after it uh, is searched by the police? Uh, the Covenant truck was uh, turned over to an insurance adjuster uh, at the direction of Covenant Transportation. Now, on that day, on October 12th, were either yourself or uh, other members of law enforcement in contact with the Covenant Trucking Company, if you know? Yes. Um, do you recall who it was that was in contact with them? I had contact with Covenant as well as other officers. Um, now, when you arrive on scene, is the victim still present on scene? No. Where is he at at this point? He was transported to the hospital prior to my arrival. Um, is it customary to try and take a statement from the victim as soon as possible? Yes. Were you able to take a statement from the victim on that day on October 12th? No. And why is that? Uh, when the victim was brought to the hospital, he was. Um, I learned that he was brought in for immediate surgery, and uh, he was not available to speak. Um, now, going back to the Covenant truck for a moment, um, did you attempt to locate any video from either the Covenant truck or any surrounding trucks in that area? Yes. And uh, what was the result of that? There were two trucks uh, that I learned that had potential for video. Uh, further investigation revealed that the video on board these trucks was event-driven, meaning more so if the truck was being driven or any kind of uh, abrupt or any kind of actions in the truck uh, would trigger <coughs> the video to be recorded. They were not recording while the truck was parked. Okay, so there there were no videos obtained from either of those trucks because they were in fact parked at that time. Correct. Um, did you have uh, the chance to speak to Covenant again after that day? Yes. And did you 
speak to them at all about their MDT system? Yes. Um, and can you just briefly explain what an MDT is? An MDT uh, in police work is a mobile data terminal. In this investigation, there is a, an onboard system on the truck that provides direct communication from Covenant Trucking to the truck. It's like a closed network type of communication um, outside of cellular telephones so that messages can be sent from the company to the trailer or the truck and then from the truck back to the trailer. Or now, to the company, I should say. Um, did Covenant keep a record of those MDT records? Yes. Um, Did you obtain those records from the Covenant Trucking Company? Yes. And um, what did those records pertain to, if you recall? The records that we got back from Covenant were uh, employee records with regards to the people involved in this investigation, as well as the mobile data terminal messages to the truck, as well as GPS coordinates. I'm going to show you what you can mark. Speaking of is communicated at 9.04 a.m. on okay. October 12th. So 9.04 a.m. would make it about nine minutes after the defendant cashes out. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And uh, what does that message say? Message dated uh, October 12th at 9.04 a.m. reads, I need you to route me back to the terminal ASAP. Paul just disrespected me in public at the TA in NJ. I need a new co-driver. I'm not taking this load with him. Okay. And is that the only message that there is in all of those records of either party complaining or stating anything about the other? Yes, that I can recall, yes. Okay. Now, do you recall what time the 911 call went out that day itself? I 
don't remember specifically. Uh, would it refresh your recollection if you were to look at the CAD report in this case? Yes. And can you explain to the jury what a CAD is? CAD is computer uh, aided dispatch. It's what police agencies typically use to track uh, calls for service. Or did you attempt after October 12th to speak to uh, and interview the victim? Yes. And uh, what was the result of that? We were unable to speak with the victim in this investigation for several weeks. Uh, I had made numerous calls to the hospital as to uh, check on his status, um, and he was unavailable to speak for quite some time. Okay. And why was he unavailable to speak? Did they, did they inform you as to why? Uh, the, I was related to me that the, uh, the victim in this case was uh, in a coma, uh, as well as uh, intubated or needing assistance uh, by medical intervention to breathe. Now, <clears throat> um, during the course of this investigation, uh, did law enforcement collect the defendant's cell phone in this matter? Yes. And what happens once it's collected? That evidence or the, the, the cell phone itself uh, is brought over to our high-tech crimes unit uh, where the information that's stored in the phone is extracted and put into a report. Okay, and um, how is the extraction? The extraction, is it a, can you explain what an extraction is, I guess? The extraction um, in a, from a cell phone is when a cell phone is connected to software that will retrieve all the data that is stored that's able to be read. And was an extraction done in this case? Yes. <clears throat> and were you ultimately able to use that extraction? Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as X39. <laughs> other information it says investigation number MC 183358 the item description is noted as 1 BD dash R containing gray key extraction and celebrate report of Apple phone iPhone SE um, now did you personally do the extraction on that phone no who did that uh, it appears to be detective Jennifer Appleman of the Bronx County Prosecutor's Office when the extraction is done, is it then turned over to you? Yes. And is that because you're the primary detective on the case? Yes. And did you review the extraction in its entirety? Yes. And did you, do you then take custody back of the defendant's phone once the extraction is done? Yes, the defendant's phone is turned back over and entered into evidence. Now, the extraction, you don't have to move. Can you open this every night now? S39B and S39C. 
39B. Are these the extraction or the printout reports from that disk that you just spoke about? Yes. Now, S, <coughs> looking first at S39A, uh, can you explain what that is? This is an extraction report um, of exported information regarding the call log from uh, Mr. Teeter's phone to Paul Stevens. Okay. And um, is there a log of calls back and forth between them? Yes. Um, and when do those calls begin? These appear to all be uh, outgoing calls to Paul Stevens starting uh, August 7th of 2018. And there are a total of seven calls that uh, the last recorded call was on September 19th, 2018. And did you learn in this case that that's on or about when they uh, went back on the road together? Yes. Now S39B. S39B is an overall call log from the uh, from Chris Teeter's cell phone. Okay. And uh, how many days does that cover? Uh, this covers October. 10th of 2018 to October 12th of 2018. Okay, and um, any point did Christopher Teeter call 911 on this call log? Is that on there? No. Anywhere on his call log where he called the Fort Town Township Police Department? from Chris Pertitor's cell phone. Okay. Now, SMS messages, uh, meaning, what's the difference between an SS, SMS and an MMS? Do you know? SMS is standard messaging service. That is just um, text message. Um, MMS is multimedia messaging service, which can also include pictures, audio files, video files, things of that nature. Okay. Now, looking <coughs> at S39C, which is the text message history, when does that uh, begin and go through? This uh, report starts October 10th of 2018 and runs through the last message recorded is on the 11th of 2018. Okay, so when you printed that report out, did you specify those dates to look at? I specified from the 10th to the 12th. Okay, and um, why was that? Why did you pick that timeline? Just to review 48 hours prior to um, the incident to see if there was any items of evidentiary value. Okay. And, and any of his text messages, does Christopher Teeter ever complain about Paul Stevens as a co-driver? No. Any mention of Paul Stevens at all in his messages to other people? No. And then uh, S39D, and uh, what is that? This is a summary of MMS messages. Okay. And it just looks like it's just one message in this case. That's correct. Any October 10th of 2018. Thank you. Any mention of Paul Stevens in that message? No. Anybody complaining about Paul Stevens? No. <clears throat> and the last, uh, the S39 E in this case. Uh, can you state what that is? This is a summary of SMS messages from Christopher Teeter uh, to Paul Stevens or vice versa. Okay, and what's the time frame on those messages? This is a, an, an all-time uh, report that was run to see if overall all messages that were saved on this phone uh, or were able to be extracted from the phone between Chris Teeter and Paul Stevens. Okay. Um, and any of those messages, do either of them complain about each other? No. Um, either of them say they don't want to drive with the other?
Did, were you able at some point uh, to meet with the victim in this case? Yes. And do you recall when that was? That was November 13th of 2018. And were you able to take a statement on that day? Yes. And where did you meet him at? At Capitol Health uh, Hospital in Trenton, New Jersey. Um, and where, where did you actually meet in, within the hospital itself? In his hospital room. Where was the victim sitting at the time of the scene? In his hospital bed. Um, why on November 13th? Why that date? We had received information on the day before, on the 12th, that the uh, that Mr. Stevens was uh, awake and able to speak. Um, now, what was his state at that time? Uh, he appeared to be uh, somewhat weak. Um, he he also appeared to be um, in kind of uh, very uh, frail, so to speak, like someone who had been um, out of it for quite some time. Now, if you know, was he still medicated at that time? I believe he was. I would have to review his records at the same time, for sure. Um, did you, in your constant communications, um, you had said you were receiving updates about his medical status? Yes. Uh, why? Not wait then. Why not wait to take a statement from him? Why on November 13th? It was the day after receiving information that he was awake and, and allowed to speak. And uh, does Paul Stevens reside in New Jersey? No. And at some point was he to be discharged from the hospital? Yes. And was he going back to Georgia after the hospital? Yeah. After meeting with him, we learned that he was, yes. Okay. Uh, do you recall what day he was discharged from the hospital? The 15th of November. Now. In this case, did you have reason to speak with the victim again? Yes. And why was that? To prepare for this trial. And uh, do you recall when we spoke with him again? I would have to refer back to a report earlier. 